first ten minutes. been a I just want to read one scripture. That's first Timothy five. 17, verse 17, one verse. As I give a thought today, when you have to say amen. amen. And the reason I was hearing the elders who rule well are to be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who work hard at preaching and teaching. I'm going to preach from a subject today. I'm worth it. If, if you're not too mean, if you can grab about two or three people by the hand and let them know, declare to them that everything that God has for them, that they are worth it. Uh, that neighbor don't believe you find about two more people to say everything. Come on, come on, come on, put, put, some, put something behind it. Say everything that God has for me. Uh, tell somebody it is for me. Understand that at being a believer, that I have worth, that if God says I am the head, that I'm not the tail, uh, I gotta know that I got value. Uh, if God says I am more than a conqueror. I gotta believe that thing that I am worth being more than a conqueror. If, if God saw me worth giving me peace of mind, I can't say when peace wanna come my way, I'm not worth it. I gotta receive peace of mind. Why? Because the Bible says that. Jesus said that this peace I Leave with you. I got to also say that if God says that I'm worth joy, I got to tell any devil that comes my way that no weapon for me. Oh, come on. I believe I got some black Bible believers in here that know that no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. I know it's early in the message, but go ahead on and nudge your neighbor and tell your neighbor it will not work. <laughs> but here it is now, now that Paul, we find Paul in the text, he now writes a letter to his son Timothy. He tells uh, his son Timothy, Timothy, there are some things that I, uh, I want to talk to you about. There's some things that you got to know uh, concerning the sanctuary, concerning the body of Christ. Uh, one of those things where uh, he says to Timothy, you got to know that in the church there are to some people to be honored. Uh, one of the people that, that Timothy had, that, that Paul has on his mind, and he tells Timothy, he says, Timothy, are the widows in the same chapter, they are due honor. They are due respect. Yeah, whenever they have this, whenever their spouse has died, I want you to take care of them. Don't, don't just leave them by the wayside and just forget about them being in the church. Uh, but, but he talks to Timothy about another group. He says, Timothy, even though the widows are worthy of honor, but there is another group that is worthy of double honor. <laughs> he says, Timothy, you have a group of elders there in your church, pastors, who are worthy of double honor. I can hear my mind and my imagination. Timothy says, uh, I heard you, Paul, when you says now that the elders are 
worth double honor, that they are worth double respect. Why are they worth double? Why do they go to McDonald's and they get a supersized fry? Why, why are everything with them is supersized? I know that we are eating and I get one scoop of potatoes, but, but here they come through the line, they get two scoops. Why? Are they worth double? He says, Son, come a little closer. Uh, let me explain to you why the elders uh, of the church are worth double. The number one reason why the elders or the pastor is worth double is because of his duty. Uh, in the word of God, you see here in verse 17, he says, The elders. Uh -huh. uh, in other words, Back in this dispensation in time, in, in this culture of time, Timothy, the elders did more than one duty. In other words, uh, they were not just religious leaders, uh, but pastor, they were community leaders. Uh, in other words, they didn't just uh, baptize your babies. Uh, in other words, they didn't just come and preach to you, uh, but they were outside of the church doing the will of God as well. In other words, they are schooled in religion and in the political arena. So Timothy for that, because they are schooled in both, they gotta have double honor. In other words, Timothy, let me go and bring it a little closer to home. Uh, they are the first ones at church on Sunday morning uh, at 6 o'clock. Yeah, yeah. At 6 o'clock, watch this, uh, opening the door. Uh, not only do they open the door, they cut on the lights. Uh, not only are they walking through cutting on the lights, but they are walking through. Uh, they're cutting on the PA system. Mm -hmm. uh, their religious duty, not only are they walking through and making sure things are conducive for the congregation as they come to church, uh, but they are praying for you and your family. They are out they are up at the middle of the night when you are, when they are all asleep, are walking the floor saying, God bless my congregation. God do something for that boy that's in my congregation. So, Timothy, so Paul tells Timothy, uh, that's the religious side of them. Uh, but at the same time, they are in the community. In other words, uh, Timothy, they are uh, downtown at Black Expo with a yellow hat on and a yellow vest on, walking the street, uh, talking, making sure things are done well. They are assisting uh, the officers of the city. Not only are they walking uh, at Black Expo and the Circus City Classic, but they are walking downtown with your children out in the street saying keep on moving. In other words they are not out there just in the street telling the kids to keep it moving but as the kids are moving they are out in the street saying God bless that boy. God bless that girl. God I know you got a plan for them. God don't allow them to die out here on So it is here. Uh, get up and give you some Bible and I'm moving on. It is here in Exodus 3 uh, and 18 that God tells Moses. He says, Moses, look, when you go see Pharaoh, uh, Moses, I don't want you to go by yourself. Uh, you got to take uh, the elders with you. Why? Because there, Pharaoh, when he sees the elders or the pastors with Through. I don't know about y'all, but 
you got to give them double because of their direction. All right, he says here, uh, the elders that rule well. Yeah, in other words, the truth be told, if many of us didn't have direction, we'll still be in the ditch of life not knowing which way to go. When I was found without direction, when I didn't know which way to go, that God allowed me to have a man of God that who could stand up and declare to me that the best is yet to come. Who could declare to me, okay? Who could declare to me, you know what? Baby, don't go left right now, but go ahead on and go right. Is there anybody in the house today? Run! <laughs> 
unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. And know that your labor is not For at the end, you will hear him say, Well done. Well done. Yes. Thank you, sir. Father, we thank you for this man. said in your word that the number 20 really symbolized every time God's people were in oppression for 20 years